Of course, many of you have been on the call before on this meeting, but I also see there's also several new people. Well, what I usually do in the beginning of uh, an open meeting, as most of you know, is uh, share a holiday, which is uh, so we can have a recognition of our essential being, so, something that's very obvious, uh, so that we all come to recognize something which is our, our, our essential freedom, in, which is also where we're all the same. And I usually speak for 15 or 20 minutes about, about that. But I'm going to do something a little different today. Um, so, you know, I have an intensive coming up in a few weeks. And I wanted to point out that what I share on the beginning of these open meetings, uh, a holiday, which is coming to know your free essential nature, your free essential being directly in your own experience, you know, nothing, not philosophically or talking about it, but actually coming to know for yourself. And uh, I think most of the people on the call do recognize that because it's quite simple, although it's also very powerful as well. But, you know, that's really just the beginning of, of the work that I do. Because while that recognition in and of itself is actually the end, it's highly unlikely that many people realize that it's the end. And so um, the most important thing for freedom to become, you know, your real living condition is that your mind, the mind has to be liberated of ignorance and delusion. And just having one recognition on a holiday doesn't do it. It may be one in a billion, but that's really unrealistic. <clears throat> so a lot of inquiry work needs to be done to put the mind to rest once and for all so that liberation is actually known. And that's why I have intensives. Otherwise, I would just do these open meetings. If this was enough, that's, that's all I would do. I would just do these open meetings, but it's not. So I have these eight-week intensives. And in the eight-week intensives, we do a lot of, well, the first three weeks are just about that initial recognition. And we spend three weeks just on that because there's, there's a lot to see about that to make it completely doubtless. And then uh, we spend the next two weeks after that uh, coming to see what really devotion to truth means, what real devotion means. And that is the means of liberating the mind by coming to know what true devotion is and why would you be devoted in the first place? You know, what's the value of this freedom? So we spend a couple weeks on that. And, it's, and I say it's devotion to truth that is really a big part of liberating the mind of uh, delusion and ignorance and making it become not just uh, an occasional recognition you have while you're on an open meeting with me or something, but you're really your own inherent being, you know. Then we spend uh, two weeks on what I consider maybe even the most important part of my work. And I'm going to talk about that today. That's what I want to discuss a little bit. And that uh, is this idea that we have free will and that we're a chooser, we can choose and that we've created ourselves. Uh, because that idea is, uh, wreaks havoc, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna read something that I wrote in a minute so that you'll see more about what I'm saying. So that part of the intensive is called compassion. And that's uh, the sixth and seventh week. And then the last week is, well, actually could even be the most important because that's when we come completely full circle and we're no longer just awareness or something like this. We come to realize that who we are right now, this is what we've been seeking. You've heard it before, you are what you've been seeking, but just hearing that words of that doesn't mean anything, you know? You need to go through the whole journey that we go through on an intensive so that you come full circle until you recognize without a doubt in your own being, in your own knowing that I'm it. I'm the absolute that I have sought 
here and now. And I call that part full circle, coming full circle or full circle freedom. So that's what we do on an intensive. That's why I have intensives. So we have one starting in a few weeks. I know a lot of people have signed up already. Uh, a lot of other people have filled out the form. If you'd still like to sign up, there's still time if you'd like to. And uh, I think uh, we've had, this is the fourth intensive we have had in the last year. So I think after this, there's not going to be another one for a while, maybe April. So this one ends in November. So the next one might probably won't be until April at least. Okay, so having said all of that, I would like to read something that I just wrote a couple of days ago. Because uh, as I said, you know, enlightenment, that's what is great. All of this is it's great, it's important. But, you know, there's something that's uh, lacking in this world. And I'll, you, you'll hear a little bit more about it as I read. And, that, and that's called compassion. And if there's any benefit to being free, then that's it. So I consider this to be a very important part of what the work that I do, actually. So here, I'm going to read something for everyone. So this is uh, the third part of the intensive, basically. One of the most challenging things for people to truly surrender is the idea that there's such a thing as free will and that we create ourselves, make choices volitionally, and as such, have sovereign agency over who we are as a person. It's deeply embedded in our psyche by culture and religion and is inseparable from ego itself. In fact, it's an essential feature of ego without which ego falls. Ego itself means I am separate. And from that belief comes the belief that because I'm separate, I have free will, control over myself, and can create who I am. But is this actually true? Have you up till now taken for granted what you've come to believe without ever looking into it? Most of us have. There's no point in taking the opposing view that there is no free will as another concept as many spiritual seekers do. As a concept that's pointless. Everyone says, I'm not the doer, I'm not the doer, I'm not the doer. But it has no impact on anything if it's only conceptual. We need to actually find out for ourselves if it's actually true or not. Have I created anything about myself? Do I actually make choices volitionally? Who is here to do such a thing? Once this is clearly investigated, it's no longer just an idea, but has great power to change how you are in this life with yourself and with others. This inquiry is often the most challenging for many people I work with because this recognition is really the end of the separate self and the separate self, which is ego, obviously does not want to give up control. It will be out of a job. In fact, it will be out of existence. This inquiry is the end of the illusion of control of ourselves, others, and the world. Giving this up seems to be a death for many people, but it only seems like a death to the part of the person that does not want to give up control, one's ego. At the same time, it's pos possibly most, excuse me, it's possibly the most important part of the work I share. Why? Because this belief in free will, in the idea that I create myself and that you create yourself, is the cause of so much division, strife, and out and out ugliness in our world. I go as far as saying that this belief is the greatest malignancy perpetrated on the world by the unhealthy human mind. What do I mean by that? It 
If we look at the state of human society as evidenced by how we treat others, including poor people, so-called bad people who commit crimes, people of other colors or classes, people with opinions and views other than our own, which we see very clearly these days, don't we? There's so much animosity amongst people about this. Well, you know what it's about. People of other political opinions, people from other nations, and even neighbors and family members. What we can notice is a lack of genuine compassion. Excuse me, I have to keep letting people in. Instead, what we often see are movements, sometimes subtle, sometimes gross, of judgment, blame, acrimony, revenge, and punishment. If we really look at the state of the world as it is, we can clearly see that in fact, those movements are purely a malignancy of the human mind, a malignancy that creates cruelty, interpersonal strife, unjustified imprisonment, class repression, and war. And perhaps we see it even more clearly in our close interpersonal relations with blame, judgment, anger, etc. What's the root cause of these moments and excuse me, what's the root cause of these movements and actions? Do they have any value? Do they solve anything? Do they create a better world? Do they bring peace or love? Are they based on truth? Clearly the answer to those questions is no. It's obvious they have no benefit at all. These movements are caused by a basic error of the mind, a belief that's not based on truth, but on ignorance. They are based on a wrong idea which states, I have created myself, and if I have created myself, then so have you. I have free will to choose, and so do you. I am in control of everything I do, and so are you. With this unexamined belief, we lash out at and punish others for their transgressions, their differences of opinion, their mistakes and errors. We lose all compassion. And we do that with those closest to us and to our neighbors, country mates, and other world citizens. But not only do we do all of that to others, we do it to ourselves with movements like guilt, regret, self-blame, and self-flagellation. We beat ourselves up and we beat everyone else up as well. We'll see during this part of the work that in fact, those movements serve no purpose and have no benefit at all, either for ourselves or for anyone around us. So is it true? Have you created yourself? Is there really free will? Can you be anything other than you are here and now? Do you choose to be who you are and do the things you do? Perhaps you'll say, yes, I do. Or as many people say, well, I certainly feel like I do. That's why we need to really examine these questions and come to know what's true. Many spiritual people these days parrot the phrase, I am not the doer, I am not the doer, I am not the doer. But it's only a conceptual belief and not a root level knowing that it's unarguable and doubtless. And that most importantly, creates genuine compassion in the heart. During this part of the intensive, we will see for ourselves what is true about free will and choice in our own doubtless, not conceptual knowing. <laughs>